everybody, welcome to a Sunday vlog. As traditionally, we usually do this. We start our, our Sunday vlog in the car. Sometimes we never get out of the car. This is gonna be a quick car chat just because I just have one thing I'm doing and it's pretty close. Um, <laughs> actually, I my son works at a climbing gym and he is a team coach and today is they're hosting a competition there. And he also is emceeing it. So I am gonna go there for a little while and hang out as long as my back will let me and um, just you know it's kind of fun so that's where I'm going right now I'm trying to make sure that my heater is on we'll do that a little bit more maybe put my heated steering wheel on and we're off I wanted to leave a little sooner than this they have two sessions and one started at 11.30 and I was hoping to catch it because he's emceeing it and I'm sure he's, you know, and dang it, I wasn't able to get in the shower in time. I had no idea that my husband was in the shower and it takes him a while. So I had to wait for him. <laughs> so instead of getting there like at 11.20ish, I'm actually leaving the house and it's 11.47. So I've missed, unless they're running behind, which sometimes they do. I doubt they are. Um, I've missed the opening kind of thing. Darn it. I also wanted to touch base with you. Uh, last week during the vlog, I, I mentioned that I was getting some new makeup and I was waiting on the joie. I'm just gonna say joar. I know, it's ridiculous how I hung out there for a while trying to figure how to say that, but <laughs> But I did try the foundation and it, I have to say, oh, the one I have, first of all, the color is way, way off. I'm, I'm wearing it because I just sort of dabbed it all over the place and I would have had to have literally just sort of rewashed my face and redo my skincare. And I'm like, nope, gonna have to work with this now. So the color is horribly off. It's very orange, but it's not just that. It is probably the worst foundation for my skin that I have ever tried or at least that I have tried in a long time. I've not been so unhappy with the foundation in quite a while. It's, it's not made for mature skin, I can tell you that. It really made my skin look, it just grabbed onto every single wrinkle possible and dried out the look of my face. Um, bad, I just, oof. So I just had to make do and do the best I could with the rest of my makeup and the finish was not for me very, very matte and just drying looking and it just made me look 10 years older. <laughs> and I still feel 10 years older <laughs> with this on. I did try the best I could to give me a better finish at the end, but yeah. So that's why I, I have, oh man, and I'm looking in the regular mirror now. Oh God, and I'm actually going somewhere. People are gonna see me not happy with how my makeup turned out. Oh my gosh. It's really bad, you guys. It just, it's the kind of finish that you look like you're wearing a crap ton of makeup. And it looks like I'm wearing a crap ton of makeup right now. Today I'm wearing my limelight that I did cut the length of. I haven't cut any more since the last time I saw you. And I just have it sort of back in a ponytail and with a clip underneath it. So there's still enough length. There's, it's, you know, because there is quite a bit of length actually. And what am I doing? There is quite a bit of length actually back there still. So there's plenty of, pl plenty of left over here. So then, there's that. I, God, I'm just so over my makeup here. I can actually take, I'm gonna take one of these masks here. I'm really gonna wipe off some of this makeup. Good lord. I haven't been this unhappy with my makeup in so long, you guys. And wouldn't you know, I have to go somewhere. Uh, yeah. I'm going the back way to the gym not on purpose. I took a wrong exit. It's 
That's why I always put my GPS on. <laughs> One of the reasons why. One is if like there's an accident, it wants to reroute me. Even if I know how to get someplace, I always use my GPS. And like this time, I wouldn't have figured out how to get there once I took that wrong exit without just kind of trying to figure out how to get back on the freeway again. So I always put my GPS on. It cuts down the anxiety tremendously for, you know, I have no inner GPS. I've never had it even when I was young. I'm terrible with like apparently remembering what I'm passing. I don't know. Even inside buildings, I can get turned around and lost um, really, really easily. Just embarrassingly easily, actually. So, having GPS these days has been a life changer for me. I'll tell you that. It makes me not afraid to go out um, to places I've never been or just, you know, places that I don't live in. You know, my husband has a lot of doctor's appointments up north. You've got to go on the freeway and know what you're doing and where to go. And, and so I would never have felt okay doing that with before GPS. I don't know what we would do. Sorry if this is jumpy. I'm just holding my phone and recording this. I am so irritated. I hate when this happens. So those of you that know, I have been sick since the very beginning of December. And those of you that may know, also, you're familiar with the fact that I have to do garbage and recycle pretty often. I was doing it once a month, and then it fell to like once every other month. So because my husband does at-home dialysis, we have constant recycle boxes because of the solutions and all of that that arrives once a month for all of his treatments. And then we have tubing and things. So I put those in bags and that has to go to the dump. So we have a constant influx of, of garbage and recycle due to just his treatments alone. And then on top of that, you know, I get things shipped via Amazon and whatnot, so I break those boxes down. Well, geez, I don't think I have gone to the recycle center, which the dump is also in that same area, since maybe October. So I am so behind on this. Well, because I haven't been feeling well. You know, I didn't drive and all of that. Well, it's just recent since I'm feeling good enough to do that. So I decided today to get up the gumption, which took a lot to finally tackle all of this that needs to happen. So I did, I got myself ready for the day, went out there getting things ready, you know, all of that, and then got into our very old, well, it's like a 2009 Lexus SUV, RX350, but it is my workhorse. I cannot bad talk that car because it is a workhorse. So got in to start up, won't start. It didn't start, the battery's dead which really ticks me off because I've recently put a brand new battery in that and it's a nice battery. I paid extra, you know, for the nicer battery. So it's probably been about a year maybe since I got that battery and I feel like, yes, it has been sitting for a couple months. Well, I, I did start it at some point because I had to maneuver around the driveway and it started just fine. It's not starting, so ticked. You know how that is, you get yourself all ready to go when you've psyched yourself out you're gonna do this and get it done um and then you can't so I came back in I'm doing this mostly to vent I came back in the house I and mean, you know you're ticked I'm ticked already I'm just really mad so I come back in and I'm like well I can't do it because the, the car's not starting I tell my husband so he's sitting at the table doing his game thing that he's doing on his iPad and um he has a grin on his face and he's not looking at me, but he's looking at his iPad with a grin and he says, I knew it wasn't gonna start. <sighs> so that's not what I wanna hear. I could have thrown something at him. <laughs> I was so, uh. anyway, I said, well, I just got the new battery. I don't, it should have started. And, Cause he did remind us, me actually, probably, if, a couple weeks ago, you know, I really should start that up. It's not going to start. And I'm like, in my head, it's a new battery. It's going to start. It hasn't been sitting all that long. So that's the reason why he said what he said. Anyway, I'm just venting. So it's like, well, what am I going to do today? Um, I don't know. I'm 
Maybe I'll record something other than this. Uh, maybe I'll just, I don't know, maybe I'll just go out and browse somewhere. It's very cold outside. Uh, I might just do nothing. Maybe I'll just sit and continue watching Peaky Blinders, which by the way, I'm very addicted to right now. It took me a couple different times to try that show because my daughter Hannah said it's really good. So I tried a couple different times and I couldn't get into it. Well, I don't know, maybe I was more in the mood. It took about three episodes because I restarted it and I am so into it now. So I'm in season four, I just started season four. As a matter of fact, last night at about midnight, I shut it off about halfway through the first episode of season four. So I think I'll just, you know, at some point today I'm gonna start that up again. Totally addicted to it. I watched it all day yesterday in between doing this and that. Something I did, was it yesterday or the day before, which is something I despise worth every ounce of my being, and that is to wash the shower tub in the, I call it my son's bathroom, but it's really just the main bathroom. And uh, I did that, and that took a lot out of me. That was like, I was done for the day. But my Lord, was that thing disgusting. So I, I finally did that. So I, I wasn't totally worthless yesterday. I also did a little tiny bit of house cleaning, which I'm thinking now as I'm standing here, it's probably a mess back here. So ignore that. Um, <laughs> maybe someday when my house is really nice and clean, I'll give you guys a little tour. Uh, anyway, okay, I my, my arm's about ready to fall off, so I'm gonna catch up with you a little later on. All right, we are off again. <laughs> I'm gonna let you guys know what I've been up to. I had a fun yet really tiring day yesterday, but it was fun definitely well worth it. I'm trying to thread the needle here. Getting out on the driveway. Yeah, it was it was uh, really cool what I did last night, yesterday. So, <laughs> I am on my way to get my daughter her birthday presents. I have no idea. I haven't, well, I'm going to go to uh, Home Goods and hope to find some kind of nice home finds for the home because they're building a brand new home and it's going to be done in uh what did she say like june-ish in the summer so i want to get her some sort of i want to get her some things for her new home and this is always tricky because what i might like I'm not sure she will. I have an idea of her taste. Um, it's kind of changed a little over the years, which happens. And I used to have her nailed when it because she liked very, very similar things as I did. Uh, but I, I think that she's kind of changed a little. So I'm just going to see what I can find at Home Goods. That's the first place we're going to go. Kind of screwed if I don't see anything at home because, because honestly, I don't know where else I could go um, here in where I live, and I definitely am not going to head up north. And I procrastinated like crazy for this. I was going to go two days ago, but I didn't feel that great, so I didn't. And then yesterday, I was all ready to go. I was going to go, and my son. I, re I didn't realize. He told me, but I didn't register it, I guess, because he said he told me more than once. But uh, every, I don't even think he's actually competed much. In, uh, this may have only been maybe his second actual climbing competition that he's participated in, that he's actually entered. And I, he's always telling me, like, I'm gonna go climb, where are you going? Seattle, okay, I'm gonna go climb. Okay, where are you going? I'm gonna go to Tacoma. It's like, okay. Uh, and so I just thought that he was going to Tacoma to go to the same gym he always goes and climbs with. And I just, just absolutely did not think it was competition at all. So he was going out the door and he mentioned something about, I don't know, something. And I said, wait, wait, wait are you competing? Like, is this a competition? He goes, yeah. And I said, are you competing in it? And he said, yeah, I told you. And I said, I did not register that at all. 
So the competition actually um, started at four and we didn't get home till about 9.45, but I, he, you know, was like carpooling with friends that are also climbing in it. So I got my butt in gear. This is such a bumpy stretch of road, <laughs> I apologize. Um, I got my rear in gear and got ready and bolted over there because uh, I have never seen him actually climb. I've watched videos him, of him climbing, but I've never seen him actually climb in person. Uh, so I really had to see this. So I did and uh, it is just the climbing community. This was a bouldering competition. Um, there's different types of climbing right so this was bouldering so they don't use ropes it's all well it's always strategy but anyways uh the, the climbing community itself the climbers are just super amazing kind no matter what their age very just great people in general and so my, my, my son, when he was quite small, uh, he, he was heavy into gymnastics. And I say that, I mean, when I say heavy, I mean heavy. Like he was on team. We were there four days a week for six hours a day. He was training and he actually did win the state championship when he was only, what was he, like six or seven? Uh, maybe seven, maybe not even that old. Um, he was, he was really good. <laughs> I mean, he was really good. Uh, so we traveled all over the Pacific Northwest and even went to, uh, in California, we went to like regional competitions and whatnot. This was nothing like that. Very informal, but more than that, it was just a really warm, wonderful place to be they cheered each other on whether they were from the same gym or not and it's just this more challenge yourself kind of thing and then giving praise and you know yelling and screaming for them when they actually completed a route that they were working on it was so cool to see and to be a part of so Like I said, he he hasn't competed much, uh, but he's been climbing since he was about 17, and so he's been climbing for for a while. Anyway, you guys, they have different sort of categories depending on how advanced you are, and. So it goes uh, beginner, intermediate, advanced, and expert. So he competed in the advanced and won first place. <laughs> so that was very cool. And it was funny because, well, <laughs> he's very good friends with the actual manager of this gym. And she's the one who put this whole competition together and did an amazing job. And she was the one who read, they ta it took about an hour to tally everybody's climb card, scorecard things. And anyway, what really happened was that she made a mistake and Shane didn't get called at all. And everybody was a little confused. Like, why did Shane not get, a, like, he didn't get a place at all? He must have got bumped. What, what happened? Well, come to find out, she just got it wrong. He actually got first place. And so, when, before they were, well, after they read out his category and he didn't place at all, he texted me and he said, because I was there, but he was like sitting up where everybody was. And he goes, yeah, I think I got, I, I, I got bumped. He goes, like, otherwise I think I would have placed third. But he goes, I got bumped. And, and uh, I said, oh, well, that didn't matter. I'm proud of you anyway. You're, you were amazing. So he wasn't upset at all. He said, I, had, I, I climbed for free. I didn't pay like a fee. Um, and he said that the only bummer was is I really wanted to give our gym that because they would have then swept it, which they did, but not in front of everybody. They, they would have swept first, second, and third place. 
So he goes, that's, that's the only thing, but he's just not the type that needs that recognition and all of that. But um, as his mother, <laughs> you know, I still, you know, it's like, oh man, you know, and he, he missed out on the money he would have won and he missed out on the crash pad. They would get a, like, they get a, like a crash pad, which is this big pad that folds out, you know, if you're climbing like outside or something, put that down. And, um, he's a little bit bummed about that, but not, to the, not a pretty much, you know, I mean, not that much. And so, I, you know, it's like, I am proud of him. He excels at just about anything he does, um, especially if it's a physical activity. He just is, he just is like a natural when it comes to that stuff. And well, he works his butt off is what he does. It's his attitude that I am the most proud of. Um, Watching him with his friends, people even he doesn't know, uh, he's naturally just this very charismatic, positive kind of person. And the sad part is, is he really doesn't see that about himself. But he is. And as a matter of fact, I was filming one of his, um, one of his routes that he was doing. And I heard behind me a kid say, well, he wasn't a kid, he was probably, I don't know, maybe in his 20s, maybe early 30s. And he said, I set that route, and he said, it makes me so happy to see Shane climb it. And he wasn't even from our gym. And yeah, and then later I was introduced to somebody that does work at his gym. He just started working not long ago, I guess. And and so I said, oh, it's nice to meet you. And he goes, yeah, he goes, Shane is like number one in our hearts. And I said, oh, oh well, he's number one in my heart too. <laughs> he's just um, a really good person, you know? And that is what I absolutely, I love that about him, obviously, but I love seeing him in his element, the place where he's the happiest. But to see him just, other people with him and him and the way he is in general is what I am so extremely proud of him and I am proud that he's you know that I'm his mom and just anyway okay I gushed on a little too much on that so <laughs> that's where we were we didn't get home till about I didn't get home till about quarter to ten at night it got a, it got done about 9.15, 9 9.30. Yeah, it's probably what, about 9, 9.15 when it was over. And I got home about 9.45, 9.50. No, it was like 9.50. It was really close to 10. So a really long day, very, for me it was. It was a long day and standing on cement. And you mostly, you have to stand the whole time. And uh, my back was screaming at me not that part wasn't fun but I did take a couple breaks there were some chairs out in the front you just couldn't see the competition and I took a couple short breaks and sat there for a bit but um yeah they they climb for three hours and then they take an hour to tally and then an hour well maybe not an hour but it took a bit to get the raffle prizes dolled out and the the actual winners announced and all of that so um, I am really tired plus the stimulation of all those people I'm not used to that I'm not used to that at all um, but it wasn't stressful being there it, I didn't get anxious about anything like that well, mainly because the the actual community itself and, and the whole thing was just so laid back and easy going I was very anxious getting there because I do not know my way around Tacoma at all. And there aren't some, there are some parts of Tacoma you want to avoid completely. This wasn't in the best part of town. <laughs> so, yeah. But I was anxious about that. I had Shane walk me back to my car because it was dark and it was just kind of sketchy and I had to park a few blocks away, a couple blocks down. Uh, but other than that, um, it was fine. And getting home was super fast getting on the freeway. So that wasn't an issue. But anyway, all right. Wish me luck, you guys, that I find some things here for my daughter. 
Uh, they're coming today about one o'clock. They live in Portland area, I should say. Actually, well, yeah, they live in Portland. They live in Oregon, like the Portland area, a little further out than Portland. But um, so they're going to be here about one. It's 10 o'clock, 10, 15 right now. I wanted to get here right when this opened. Wish me luck. I have a funny feeling this isn't going to be my only stop, but uh, I also want to get some sort of cake or something that we can put candles in and whatnot. So talk about procrastinate last minute stuff. That's me. I wonder why I get anxious. <laughs> All right, guys, I will be back. Okay. Well, I did get a couple things for her house and I hope she likes them. One thing really is going to just remind her of me. <laughs> so I, I think she will like it. It's just, she knows, everybody knows that I'm really into birds, well, birds and bunnies. And of course it's all, you know, it's home goods. So they have a ton of bunnies, but they had this really cool, like I would keep it in a heartbeat. I like ivory vanilla, creamy color, antique looking, big ceramic bird. I mean, it's really cool. <laughs> I love it and I had to get it because I think it'll go in her house fine but she'll put it out and it is definitely going to scream me figure okay that's gonna work and it's neutral enough where I do think she'll like it but if she doesn't I don't know tell her and then I got this kind of circled gold like candle holder thing you put the candle inside the glass thing and it's kind of a round gold metal thing um, and then I got her a porch one of those tall wood home porch signs that just says home on it and it's more for summer because it's gonna be the summertime when they move in there so it has for the O it has a ring of um, of it and I love it I have it all over my house um, anyway I can't, for some reason I, I can't think of it so right now I think I'm gonna go to Target to get the wrapping paper I have no idea how I'm gonna wrap these gifts but I'll see um, I might find just big gift bags honestly I don't know how else to, to wrap what I got but I'm gonna get all of that at Target All right, I'm gonna go get the wrapping and the cards, or the card, and I will be back. Okay, I got what I needed at Target. I even got a cake. It's like one of those sort of frozen, you have to let them thaw a little bit, like a turtle cake. Those are so delicious. I'm not gonna have any, but um, they are really good. <laughs> and you know what? I got some cool, like candles but I was just checking as I was putting stuff in the trunk and I don't think they made it in my bags I don't feel it going in there so if that's true it's a bummer because I don't have any candles at home anyway um, I'm gonna have to call it good because I do want to get home. It's 11:25, but they're gonna be here around one, and I do want to do some house cleaning. And hopefully, hopefully, she really likes what I got her today. I think she will. I hope so. freeway. I'm feeling pretty good about that. I still I still really have all the same symptoms. I just am learning to live with it kind of. Um, if I'm having a particularly off day and it's everything's a little worse then I absolutely just I I stay home. I don't really go anywhere. But those days are getting farther and fewer between which is fantastic. 
as mentioned, I did drive all the way to Tacoma. Um, and that was actually my first trip on the freeway. And here I was, high anxiety, had no idea where I was going. Thank the Lord for GPS. I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for GPS. So I did fine, I did good, I did great um, at the meet and, and everything was good. So yeah, I'm feeling as back to normal, I think, as I am going to get. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, it's still, I know I missed last week completely, did not get a video out. My fibromyalgia, it's either my fibromyalgia or the Cymbalta, which by the way, I need to give you an update on that. I have been taking the Cymbalta now for a week. It's been seven days, I believe, exactly. And no side effects at all. It's only 20 milligrams, and I know it's about 60 milligrams where all the therapeutic benefits start happening for most people. Maybe I don't need to be up that high, I don't know. But right now, I'm glad just to report that I've got a good kind of, you know, starting dose and no, no side effects that at all, which is great because about this time, seven days in with Lexapro is, was a whole different story. So I'm starting to lean heavily on the fact that a lot of that, if not the entirety of those uh, side effects I was having that made me feel hyperthyroid was the Lexapro. Uh, so, so far so good. Cause I started also in a very, very low dose on the Lexapro. Anyway, uh, good, good to know. So that's great. However, I am either just having a fibromyalgia flare up just in general, which is highly probable. Are we gonna go any faster than this car? Cause I do need to get over. I haven't had this major of a fi fibromyalgia flare up where all of my joints are killing me. All of those pressure, all those points where they test you for fibromyalgia are just really out there. I mean, it's, it's been uh, something. My hips even have been hurting. I don't sleep well because I have to go from one side to the other because my hips are hurting. My hips are generally not an issue in my life at all. And just my elbow joints, my neck, my back has been burning way more than normal. The just everything is definitely amplified this last week. Uh, yeah, so it could be the Cymbalta, but that, you know, the funny thing is Cymbalta is supposed to actually help with this sort of pain. So, uh, and I'm on such a low dose, I would be, I don't know. So I'm just going to keep an eye on it. It could just be a flare up. I haven't had one quite like this in a while, but you just never know. That's the only thing that's been kind of amped up lately. I'll deal with that any day over amping up vertigo and stuff like that. So, so far so good on the Cymbalta. I haven't really caught my stride since I was sick, you know? So, hence why I'm doing last minute birthday shopping for my daughter because again, I haven't really, haven't really caught my stride yet to get back into the life in that way so we got it done and it we got home it's 11 38 so really the only thing I need to do is sort of clean the bathrooms and vacuum the kitchen's clean and my son unfortunately works today so and then my other daughter that lives about an hour from us she's really sick so it's just gonna be my oldest daughter, her husband, Jasan and Ibrahim, and me and Mike, my husband, our dad. All right, well, I'm home now, and if this is the last that I see you, I wanna thank you for hanging out with me for this one, and sorry that we skipped a week all together last week, but I always appreciate you tuning in and spending time with me, and I hope you have a really great week.
Thank you. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah.